Welcome to Joe's Astrology. This is the birth chart for Kim Kardashian. She's a Sagittarius rising, a sun in Libra, a moon in Pisces. So let's start here with the Sagittarius rising, which is ruled by Jupiter. And Neptune is there in the first house. It's the only planet in the first house. And it's pretty close to the rising. So Neptune is going to characterize her life very strongly. And she is a TV personality. She lives a dream life. She's a very expansive personality. We think of Jupiter, Jupiter and Neptune together, uh, expanding that dream life. And we see Jupiter, the ruler of the chart, is going to be in Virgo, conjunct the midheaven. And Venus is also there in Virgo. They're pretty close. We could call it a conjunction there between Jupiter, Midheaven, and Venus. So she has one of the most fortunate aspects in astrology, Jupiter, Venus. It's the ruler of her chart. It's connected to her Midheaven. Saturn is also there in Libra, which it rules, or which it's exalted in. And that gives that Jupiter, Venus on the Midheaven uh, very much staying power. And staying power with regards to success and beauty. Because Venus rules beauty and uh, that Saturn is in Libra and her son is also in Libra. So very much a public figure when it comes to beauty. And throw in the Virgo, and you have a person who's, from what I can tell, I'm not an expert in this field. She's got a lot of work done. She's had a lot of work done on her face, on her body, etc. And we see that with people that have Virgo. We see the Jupiter, Venus, and Virgo often, um, instead of really, they, 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 I guess they really don't, for the most part, it seems like they don't really ever resolve uh, their, um, their attention to their own beauty, especially for people that, are, that have, like we would say, like a uh, strong Venus or Venus in the chart, or they're a Venus type person. They never really resolve that, and... Um, you will see, you would definitely see a Venus and Virgo type person getting plastic surgery if they could. They'll have no issues with that as long as they can afford it. And we do see more Virgo as well with the sun, uh, the sun at 28 degrees Libra. This moon here at 28 degrees, it's in an inconjunct or quincux. The moon and... Um, the sun there so even more I call that the Virgo quincux so even more emphasis on um, being very analytical and uh, noticing detail so you could see this could be a person with all that Virgo that would definitely um, and well, that would definitely want to do something about her appearance and of course being in television that just makes it, and having the money, of course she's going to do it. Um, but I think some people would see her and say, and think, well, she's in television, that's why she's doing it. Well, we're looking at the astrology here, and there is a lot of personal stuff that even if she wasn't in television, I could tell you she still would want to do it. She still would be obsessed with her looks. So the other thing is, this is with that, with that Sagittarius rising. I saw this with somebody else. I forget who else I did it did it for. Um, but if we were doing an electional chart and have that Jupiter to rule the chart, to be right on the midheaven there, moving towards the midheaven, this would be a, you know, for, well, even for a person being born, it's a, it's a great placement to have, or what most people think is a great placement, or most people, what most people would desire. And of course, the sun being in Libra, it's ruled by Venus. Um, you know, often with Libra, we see um, it's one quality of Libra that they have strong beauty characteristics where they, where they may be people-pleasing and very appeasing to the eye. And we see Pluto here. Pluto here as well. And Pluto is like the sex symbol. Pluto rules the eighth house in Scorpio. She also has Mercury and Uranus in Scorpio. 
So definitely with that Pluto conjunct Sun, that gives it, uh, you know, that extra emphasis on sexuality. It's like a combination of sexuality and beauty, which I think is obvious when you when you watch her. Um, and then to have that Uranus, Mercury, and Scorpio. Uh, She's definitely, you know, that quickens the mind. It makes it, can make it a progressive mind. And uh, she may, I don't really know that much about her. She may not come across as very smart, but she, I, she probably has a very progressive and quick mind if you get to know her in person. Uh, also with that Mars there, Mars Uranus is a very dynamic electric aspect. I mean, she's definitely electric. You see with the Scorpio, with the Mars Uranus, with the Sun Pluto. And this Mars is, uh, I'm sorry, this um, Uranus is also making a sextile. Really that conjunction is making a sextile to the Midheaven. So people are seeing this when it comes to her. You see it's in the 12th house. You think of like acting and being on television. So people are seeing this. This is what, I mean, this is what attracts people to her through television. Uh, we also see it's making a uh, trine to the moon as well, that Uranus-Mars uh, conjunction. She also has the North Node in Leo in the 8th of, um, of other people's money, sexuality, the ruler coming back to that Sun-Pluto. Uh, and everything that I said about the Sun Pluto is really where she's moving towards and put that Le North Node in Leo again in the eighth uh, that house that Pluto would rule and this is her Sun this is her vitality this is what um, people are seeing her take action on very much wants to be center stage so if you look at a chart like this you would say well this is a person who wants her looks wants her sexuality to be center stage for everyone to see and that would be part of her you know where she's headed for her life uh, life purpose her life direction and that is that works for her we see the south node being an Aquarius uh, in the second so more of this um, you know, the ruler here, the Uranus, here, Uranus and Scorpio, with it being in the second and Aquarius, I talk about the internet being associated with these placements, and many people I do, I do readings on for, on YouTube, YouTube personalities, but she's coming from this Aquarius place in the second house, when we could also correlate Uranus with television. Television is actually a, a very advanced technology for what we're used to. So she's coming from a place of of money, technology, television. And let's see here. We also see, this is like a very, what I call it, like I would call somewhat of a clean chart. And if we're looking at evolutionary astrology, we're looking at Pluto here in the 10th. And that's where she's coming from. And we're looking at the south node in the 2nd. And when we're seeing South Node in the second, Pluto in the tenth, we can associate the second house and the tenth house with status, uh, achievement, ambition, making money, using the self as a resource, focus on resources. They go together very well. You think of Capricorn and Taurus. And then where she's headed, the eighth house, and then we look at the polarity of Pluto, it's in the fourth. Uh, and they're both in fire signs. And they're just like the Pluto and the um, South Node are air signs. They're both the North Node and the Polarity are in fire as well. They're both in the eighth and the fourth. So again, there's there's that con congruency uh, between those signs and those houses. So that's what I, what I mean by by saying that it's a very clean chart. Uh, there's direction there. There's intention of moving in the direction that you're supposed to, as opposed to being lost and in a state of 
indecision, um, uncertainty, um, not be able, not able to really get anywhere with your with life, with what you want or what you think you want. Big difference there when you see the two different charts. She has a part of fortune in Taurus in the fifth, fifth being like Leo, self-expression, being center stage, attention, and Taurus being money, a part of fortune, money. So making money off of that. If I saw this chart from a young age, I would know she's going to be a superstar. I would know that she was just just her being her, her personality, she's money. That's what I that's how I would interpret this, uh, looking at this chart if she was if she was my daughter. I don't know anything else about her family or anything like that. I'm not a watcher of Kim Kardashian. If you are, that's that's great. It's just not for me. See if there's anything else here. We see the nodes. Mercury is in the 11th here in this chart. And it's squaring the nodes. So there's also emphasis that this is you know, something that she's used to, something that she's done before, and there's a resolving or a cleaning up to do with this 8th house north node. So she would definitely sense that. There would definitely be some, as I was saying, this is a clean chart. If we get into her personal life, maybe some of you watching this can, um, can elaborate. Something to do with the 11th house, Aquarius, Maybe some scandals, maybe some sex scandals. Something to do with Mercury, her mind. You know, we think with that Mercury, Uranus, and the 11th, and Scorpio, maybe there was um, some very Uranian sex scandal or uh, something that's kind of taboo that she was involved with that, um, you know, she would have desired to do. And, uh, she also may have wanted to hide it there with the South Node in Aquarius. And there may be some issues there with covering it up, putting it out there. Which one do I do? Uh, should I do that? Etc. I'm not sure exactly. Again, maybe if you're hearing this and you're a fan of hers, you can elaborate in the comments. I'm sure there's something like that going on. So Kim Kardashian, that's my mini reading for her. Hope you enjoy this. And have a great day.